These extraordinary scenes in, in Tunis and Cairo evoke those of Berlin and Prague in 1989. Yet, as we share their hopes, You know, I take it as a badge of honor, and so should you, that in our free societies you can have protests. You can't have these protests in the farcical parliaments in Tehran or in Tripoli. This is real democracy. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech was warmly received by Democrats and Republicans in Congress. According to ABC News, Netanyahu received 29 standing ovations during his address, four more than President Obama received during his State of the Union earlier this year. However, there was at least one dissenting voice inside the halls of Congress Tuesday. Yet, as we share their hopes... That was Ray Avalea, a Jewish-American activist with the group Code Pink. She was disrupting Netanyahu's speech standing in the congressional gallery. She was yelling, no more occupation, stop Israel war crimes, equal rights for Palestinians, occupations indefensible. As she was screaming, members in the audience tackled her to the ground. Undercover security forces dragged her outside. She was taken to George Washington University Hospital, where she's treated for neck and shoulder injuries. At the hospital, police arrested Avalea and charged her with disorderly conduct for disrupting Congress. She, her protests came as part of a week-long series of actions organized by Code Pink called Move On, Move Over APAC. Ray Abelaya is joining us in Washington, D.C. Explain your protest yesterday, Ray. Thanks, Amy, for having me on. Uh, yesterday, I stood up and unfurled a banner and spoke the truth about what's going on in Israel, uh, the war crimes and occupation, oppression and inequality uh, that Palestinians are suffering from uh, must end. And it was absolutely despicable to see our Congress pandering to Netanyahu as if he was the president of the United States. And I think after seeing the speech, every American should be outraged and the progressive community needs to rise up and take courage uh, and take action for justice, democracy, freedom and equality in the Middle East as well as here at home. Uh, I think that the, the act I took of courageously standing up in front of Congress doesn't, the opportunity to do that doesn't come along very often, but every day as Americans we have an opportunity to stand up and uh, whether it's putting our money where our hearts are uh, by participating in economic pressure against Israel through the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement. Uh, or calling our Congress people or taking other actions, uh, it's time for us to say no to this terrible policy that, just as Dr. Barghouti has illustrated, uh, will not bring about peace. Netanyahu proved yesterday that he is the primary obstacle to peace and justice for Israelis and Palestinians. And to see our Congress giving away $3 billion of our tax dollars every year to Israeli war crimes while our economy suffers, while our kids can't go to college, while our, uh, our needs aren't being met here at home is absolutely an outrage. Um, the the uh, thing Ray, I want to say Ray, is that when me, I stood up and was tackled ask yesterday, it was by members of APAC. Yes. What were you just saying? You were tackled by members of APAC? I just wanted to uh, say that uh, the people that were sitting around me in the gallery of Congress yesterday were mostly wearing badges from the APAC Israel Lobby Conference, um, and I did not expect that people holding such power and representing such a huge lobby group would respond so violently 
to my peaceful disruption. And after I spoke out, Netanyahu said, you know, in, this is how, what's possible in a democracy, and you wouldn't be able to get away with this in other countries like Tunisia. And uh, I think that is ridiculous and absurd. If this is what democracy looks like, that when you speak out for uh, freedom and justice, you get tackled to the ground, you get physically violated and assaulted, and then you get hauled off to jail, that's not the kind of democracy that I think I want to live in. Um, Harar Haaretz newspaper in Israel identified you as a Jewish American activist of Israeli descent. Is your family from Israel? My father's family is from Israel, yes. And what does it mean for you to speak out? Often in this country, the Jewish community is portrayed as monolithic when it comes toward to dealing with Israel policy and supporting the Israeli government. Um, your thoughts on that? And what does it mean for you to speak out with your family from Israel? I've been to Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza several times, and after witnessing the destruction, the Jewish-only roads, the wall, uh, the, the bombing of Gaza, and uh, the, the inequality there, I feel like when I returned to the United States, I had no option but to uh, speak out for justice. And I feel this uh, tremendous responsibility as a Jewish American to speak out for justice and against these war crimes that are being committed in my name as a Jew, as a U.S. taxpayer. Um, but it's not easy, uh, for sure. The, uh, there's a culture of silence and fear in the Jewish community around speaking out about this. Um, and it's uh, certainly I get some blowback from family and friends, but I think it's so important to follow uh, my principles, my integrity, and my heart. And I urge other, uh, especially young Jews, to do the do the same. I think that us, as the next generation, uh, we see things differently than the the kind of brainwashing, or we call it blue washing, that um, the that we've been fed sometimes by our congregations. Um, or by Israel. Um, we have to see through the, the veil of uh, religious um, uh, narrative to see that, that what Israel is doing is, is not in the best interest of Judaism either. And you were just asking Mr. Baguti about the Jewish state. I think that what Israel is doing is completely out of line with Jewish values. The value of tikkun olam, of repairing and healing the world, is, is totally absent from the Netanyahu administration. So we have to reclaim those I, I values thank and say you. that it's not in the best interest of any I want to, to thank this. you for being with us, Rea Balea, peace activist with the group Code Pink, who was tackled yesterday as she shouted out during Prime Minister Netanyahu's address to a joint session of Congress. This is Democracy Now! When